Hi, my name is Ron Johnson, and welcome back to another He Said, She Said. So those that know yet, what I do is I help people that are tired of who they are and where they're in life. If you're in a situation where I feel stuck and lack low, have low self-esteem and lack confidence, this is where I can help you because I have been there and I too know how it feels and who doesn't want to live a better life. I'm here again with Denise and Denise, take it away. Hi, I'm Denise Lewis and Ron, I'm so excited to be here for our third He Said, She Said. This is going to be fun. Yay, number three. Um, <laughs> I have a, a, a business called GrandSlamCoaching.com. I'm a performance-based coach. So when you're happy with your relationship and want to get your business better, you want to get your performance better, be it on the field like me or off the field in the boardroom or the classroom, I'm the person you call at GrandSlamCoaching.com. And Ron, I think this is going to be a fun topic today. I'm excited. Uh, this is one of the best topics, I think, we should address because it is out there. We just don't talk about it in mainstream. And no, we, don't. About, we don't talk <laughs> we about it, but we all think it, we all said it, we all have been there, unless you're not alive. That's a different story. But yeah, let's get it out there. Let's let's debunk this myth, shall we? So, yes, and we're gonna talk about is she's so crazy. <laughs> and I always like to start with an example. And I always lean on relationships because that's where I had the biggest, I think, I used to think the biggest downfall and I wish I could improve and it wasn't working the right way. Well, I used to use this term a lot. She's so crazy because we all have to have a laundry list of things you want. We talk about long hair. I love long hair. We talk about colored hair. We talk about height, economic status, uh, social mm -hmm. status, uh, background, family values, principles. I mean, the list can go on and on. Most of the time- Little ticks in the boxes, honey. Are you yeah. making are you meeting my list? Yeah. Exactly. Are are you tall enough? Are you pretty enough? Do you have education? What's your what's your income? Do you have kids? Do you want kids? Do you want to get married? And it can go on and on. Mm -hmm. So what happens is that we end up, you know, especially when I was dating, I end up just following the path of least resistance, dating ones that would say, Well, I want to date them, but I really don't want to be with them, I want to be with somebody else because they lacked certain features that I wanted. They didn't check mark the boxes that were important to me, which were looks at one point in my life. And um, I was never honest with them as far as I would say, yeah, I'm looking for a relationship, want to settle down. And then when things weren't going the right direction or I would find someone better, I start the ghosting, right? I start not calling, not texting, not following up, making plans, canceling last minute because I'm fine. I'm going to pursue this one that's making you know, me happier. And then when she would call, she was text, she'd be like, what the hell, what the F's going on? I'm like, man, she's crazy. She's, 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 too, she's bucking me. She's too smothering me. And the whole idea is I'll call her crazy because I wasn't communicating. I wasn't being honest. So if she's in the relationship or dating me 100%, of course, they're going to be like, Ron, what's going on? Why are you not communicating with me? Because mm -hmm. I was lying. And the only way I was able to cover that up I'll tell my boys, man, she's crazy, dude. Shoot. You see this message from her? Yeah, wow, she must be crazy. <laughs> and, and the thing is, she was trying to communicate. She was trying to feel then, but now I feel so terrible. I would call people crazy. And um, I was one crazy. Yeah, and I and was you, yeah, it was me. And you feel terrible. That's right. Because when you point the finger at someone else, Ronnie got three pointing back at you. And I learned that today. Exactly. And I'm the one who taught you that too. So <laughs> pat on the back for yourself, right? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> pat on the back for myself. But you know, it's and and you're right, it is really easy to say he's crazy or she's crazy or they won't leave me alone. And it wasn't, you know, let's not be too hard on yourself. It's not that you were lying, you just didn't have the skills to communicate effectively back then. Okay, this ties to like that. both both episodes one and two where we talked about you know, men are from Mars, women are from Venus, we're not communicating properly. A lot of it is because we haven't been taught properly how to communicate. Um, we talked about in our last session how for a long time, it hasn't been okay for men to express their feelings. And, yes. you know, also putting yourself out there to say, hey, this isn't making me happy. And here's why there's a fear of rejection. There's a fear of, Ron, you don't know what you're, what you're talking about. You know, you, you're, you know, you're not a good man or you're not a good person or 
you know, whatever, whatever, whatever happens that then makes the converse instead of being able to say, Ron, honey, love you, but you know, you shaved your head. I miss your hair. It's not working for me. Got to go. Or you say, Denise, you cut your hair and it's not working for me. Stop coloring it. Cut your gray coming in, not working for me. Let's just leave as friends, you know, and, and, and there's a bit, there's a big risk to that. And I think it's very admirable when I hear that people are still friends with their ex. Cause a lot of times we, as human beings, it's like, you're out of my life. I'm taking the general Sherman approach <laughs> and leaving a whole lot of scorched earth behind. The further away, the better. And in some cases, that is necessary. <laughs> and in some cases, it's not. So now that you've learned a little bit more about yourself and you've learned a little bit more about the boxes that you want to tick, now how do you want to approach the conversation and and maybe think about is she really crazy or is she confused ah here's the question here wow. is you hit hit the nail around the head is i had a fear the fear was being alone so as you try to play both sides of the fence having mm -hmm. this one over here keep it nice and warm while you're playing this one over here trying to warm it up the whole idea was i was afraid of being alone so to end up happening i'll end it with that one this one didn't work out. I'll just cycle back to the first one. I'm so sorry. I was in the wrong place in my life. And, you know, what it boils down to, Denise, is that now, as I'm getting older, the fear of being alone is non existent. But what's more important, we all should check out is what are our principles and values? Like when yeah. I was dating, my value was looks, my value was education, my value was economic stance, my value was everything superficial. As I'm getting older, I value time, character, travel, communication, mm -hmm. looks. Of course, you'd be attracted to someone somewhat. I mean, you have to, you know, sexually attractive is important, physical attraction is important, but it's not so dominating. Well, that's true. I mean, I want someone, okay, for example, I want someone who at least makes an effort to take care of themselves. You are in course. You're incredibly fit. You're incredibly muscular. You know, you spend a lot of time at the gym. I applaud you for that. Um, I'm happy with no more than like 10 or 15 pounds overweight, as long as they're trying, you know, yeah, that's all that matters. That's huge. Super Bowl Sunday. It is just a gorge fest. And I'm totally in on that Christmas day, Thanksgiving day, my birthday, whatever. But the other meals, are you making an effort to like have a salad to not have all sorts of fried foods? You know, are you getting out and doing something every day to kind of offset that? You know, as long as you have a care factor. For me, it used to be a good head of hair. And <laughs> I don't have that. That well, <laughs> by choice, you don't by have choice. that. You do have a very good looking bald head, though, I will say. You know, thank so, you. So, you know, good head of hair, not that big of a deal. You talk about beauty. I've I've discovered that the beauty is from within the good moral compass, the good deeds, the good thoughts, the good actions. Everybody makes poor choices, but you, as long as you're doing, making the as good a choices as you can with the information you have to hand and can look yourself in the mirror at the end of the day and say, I did my best. And yes, there's room for improvement. That's the inner beauty that I've been seeking. And you know what? So when you think about those values you have, those are longevity values. Mm -hmm. If I'm to girl at 25, and 20 years down the road, she won't look like she did at 25. Maybe after having a kid or two, or maybe life in general, just hit you a couple of curveballs. Yeah. It may look the same. But her character will be the same. Her character from 20 to 45 will be exactly the same if she hasn't had any major trauma. Or in my case, my character changed because I woke up and realized, damn, I got to do something different. This ain't working. Yeah. And it's, it, you know, even from the time I met you, we've known each other, what, two years now, your mm -hmm. character has woken up an awful lot. And it's good to see. It's really awesome. It was, and likewise for you. So I'm curious about, you talk about character, my character, you got to put your stuff out there too. So what are women saying about man? He's a buffoon. He's dumb. What, what are they saying behind our backs? I, I got to know. Okay. Lay it out for me, please. <laughs> I will lay it out for you. Okay. Um, when 
Okay, gone are the days when men can go out and earn the money and come home and have everything taken care of for them. Okay, men who want that still to this day, they, they crumble under the pressure. They're, man, they're like a bad, rotten, stale cookie. Okay. Hard, you don't, you don't want to be, you don't want to be the stale cookie. Okay. You, you, you got to stand up and be able to participate as much as you can. Not everybody can handle every single crisis, but you know, man up, you know, I can't stand the sight of blood. Don't become a doctor. That's fine. You know, but just own up to it. This is not my skill set. This is not my thing. Um, people who are too, it's all about the money. It's all flash and no substance. That's how we, oh, there's a guy with flash and no substance. It's all about the money. It's all about the status. He doesn't care. He's going to roll over whoever he can to get what he can because that's what his uh, diminished ego needs. Men with fancy sports cars, making up for lack of the bedroom. <laughs> Especially Somewhere. when you get older. Yep. <laughs> If you have a flashy sports car, you're not doing it in the bedroom. And if you're a little too perfect and a little too polished, you're just a pretty boy who, again, is all about you. Mm -hmm. So it's finding that nice balance between uh, you need to be strong. You need to be the knight in shining armor sometimes. And then there's sometimes when it's okay to say, you know what, I need help too. You just have to be able to give as much as you get. Oh, you yes. You know what? I had this term. I called, I met this girl one time and um, I talked about before my podcast. Her nickname is Narcissist. That's not her real name. Um, but I would call her a perfect resume. So like you get a resume, it's like name is there, you know, this nice spacing, everything spelled right, the great education, the great experience, but you realize, wait a minute, the I is not dotted, the T is not crossed, there's a punctuation missing there. That's what I call perfect resume. She gets everything flashy on paper. When you start digging in, you realize, wait a minute, you have the nice boobs, you have the beauty, you have the charisma, you can get anything you want from a man because she used to be to get what she wants. Mm -hmm. But when you start digging a little deeper, it's like a, have you seen an like empty canister? You shake it up, like, is there anything in there? Hello? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> That's it's no like. empty canister. It's all flash and no substance. All flash, no substance. I mean, yeah. and what I mean, what I'm thinking you mean by substance means the character. Yeah. It all like, comes back to the character. So give me a couple of terms. I have to know what are women saying about men behind our back? Are you, you're a pretty boy. If you're, ah. if you are far too polished and far too into yourself mm -hmm. and you are never, ever, ever going to give the attention to detail to anything other than you. But interesting. Yep. Oh, no, 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 a second. So does not want want a hot looking guy, tall, muscular, extravagant. We all, want tall, we all want tall, dark, and handsome. And okay. just right. as a man wants tall, willowy, skinny, beautiful. And it mm -hmm. takes time and effort to create that illusion every single day. But you have to realize that when you wake up in the morning, we all don't look like this, just like you all don't look like you do. No, I didn't. So, <laughs> Not this morning. <laughs> um, yeah. And um there are some men who it is very clear, it is very evident that taking care of themselves and having their polish just right is above and more important than absolutely anything else. So if all of his attention is going to be on him, <clears throat> how much attention does he have on, is he going to spend on me? He's only going to spend attention on me when I'm perfect and polished and together which means when I have a meltdown or I've got a crisis and I need help, he's not going to be there. He's the hollow tree trunk. Interesting. Mm -hmm. So even though you would like a tall, dark and handsome, the fact that he spends so much time on himself means energetically he has no time for you. Yep. He has no, he has very little or no time for me and he'll do it. He'll do it at first to hook me in 
or get me in the relationship, but then, but long-term, it's not going to be there. That's what I want to know. So it gets you into looks, you hook line sinker already in a relationship, yeah. six months, 90 days down the road, you realize, wait a minute, there's no substance in your false bottom. Yeah. And it'll be, it'll be the eye rolling. Oh my God, not again, Denise. Can't believe you're having a meltdown again. See, look, I moved my head, my lint moved and you know. That's okay, technical difficulties. I wanted to get the eye rolling. He's gonna roll his eyes and say, oh my God, here we are again. And you know, it could be over the same issue. It could be over a different issue, but you know, sometimes you gotta get it out. You know, as a woman, as a man, this sucks and here's why. Let me just get it out. Let me verbally vomit for like, you know, 10, 15 minutes. And then, you know, give me a hug and give me a glass of wine or whatever I'm drinking and tell me it's going to be okay. And, you know, ask me what I want to do about it. I might not have an answer. And I may have to say, I need to go crawl in bed with the covers over my head. I'll check you. I'll see you when I see you, you know, but he's a pretty boy is only going to tolerate that so many times. Okay. And then he's just going to be back to all about him. Yeah. Within a flash, he's back to normal. Yeah. Yeah. You know what I, what I called that when I was dating? I called it the 90 day probation. Like, certain a job. You don't go to yeah. a job without it's been on 90 days before you get your benefits, your full time, whatever it may be. In 90 days, a person's character will really show itself. So, who they are day one is the same person 90 days from day one. It's truly who they are. Now, if you start seeing cracks in the cement, you start seeing things topple and things don't make sense, do you realize their character is only an illusion they gave you? Could be. Um, however, when I was uh, dating my ex, um, I was going through something awful with my ex before that. And um, I did not show that at first. I did not reveal all of what was going on because I was embarrassed. There was a lot of embarrassment. And once I once I did get it out, I felt better. I thought I had some understanding um, because I was I was being pressured about, you know, with with my latest ex, you know, let's move in together, let's do this, let's do that. And I was like, you know, I'm not done. I have business to clean up with the other guy. Um, and I was embarrassed about that. And I was embarrassed about how long it took me. Um, but I did it and I moved on. And now I've got the L, the current ex who I'm still trying to clean up shit with. So <laughs> So, you know, as I'm trying to move forward with, with a new fellow, he's like, let's do this, let's do that. I'm like, yeah, I can't do that yet because I've got this other thing over here that I still have to clean up, you know, five years later. And, and it's embarrassing. So I let him know as much as I need to know. Thankfully, he's still with me because he realizes that, you know, it hasn't changed my character. It hasn't changed me, but there have been plenty of other people in between and before him who not accepted it and don't want to wait around for me so they've gone by the wayside and that's okay that's okay because you didn't need them <clears throat> i didn't so we got pretty boy pretty boy floyd is the old saying goes right what's pretty the next boy. one? Oh, then you've got the mama's boys who want everything done for them they want to come home they want to sit down have their meal cooked for them every night get their laundry done you don't want a mama's boy that is a dying breed so wake up guys you know, it's fine on occasion or when you're sick or, or don't get me wrong, Ron, if you and I were a couple and you came home from work and I felt the need to cook and in the mood to cook and I wanted to do something nice for you just to show you how much I cared about you. That's one thing. Don't expect it every night. Mm. No. Like you said earlier, it's become the norm now. Um, even my mom, she's 70. She says she, she didn't call pretty boy, but she don't want to be a housewife or housemaid where she mm -hmm. comes home. He wants his. He, every day, unless you say, unless he's paying all the bills, she's 100% taking care of her. If we are in half, half, you work, I work, we contribute to the household. Mm -hmm. And that means that that's just because I work, you can't come home, expect to have your three squares taken care of, which means you got breakfast, lunch, and dinner, freshly mm -hmm. made. You got some pick up your plate, wash your dishes, and put away the food while you relax on the couch. Yeah. Those days are gone. Yeah, gone. Absolutely. Gone. Gone. Now again, now, if you're sick or if you had a really shitty day, if you had a really bad day, I feel like, oh, honey, I got it. Just go relax, go chill, do whatever. But again, that's going to be an exception and not the norm. That's interesting. Okay, so you got Mama's boy, Pretty Boy Floyd. Is it anything else that I might not have heard yet? Well, then we have the Steady Eddie group. Oh, Steady Eddie. Okay, what is this? Steady Eddie, man, they are always there. They are willing to pitch in. 
those are the guys that are the keepers. You know, steady A is a keeper. He steady Eddie is a keeper. You know, you can count on him. You can depend on him. If he says he's going to do something, he's going to do it. And if he can't do it, he's the first one to put up the flag to say, oh, my God, this is what's happened. This is what's preventing me from doing from completing my agreement with you. OK, hold on. Hold on. I, I, I got to hear this, though. Your opinion, a woman's perspective. I thought women want a guy that's of interest. That's every Sunday you guys are doing something different. So most oh, but, of them want a steady but, Eddie now. But we are. I mean, we do do things, but a steady Eddie guy. Instead of being like this, he's kind of like this, you know, we all have our moments. We all have our moments, but I know I can count on him. Okay. I know I can count on him. And if he says he's going to do something, he's going to do it. And he's going to follow through with that commitment. And if anything comes up, that's going to affect his ability to, to, to meet his commitment, he's going to put up the flag before the shit hits the fan and say, Hey, I, you know, this is what's come up. You want this on Tuesday? I can't, it, uh, it's, you know, Today, Thursday, I can't do this by next Tuesday because X has now come into play. What do you think? How can we work around this? Is this okay with you? What can I do, Denise, to help your needs? And as long as you're open and honest with me, I, I can work with just about anything. Okay, so this has hit me then. Because when I was dating out there, I always thought I had to be adventurous make them laugh, you know, as people have seen me, they call me an old soul. Mm -hmm. uh, they say, Ron, you, you're not, you're not a comedy kind of person. You're not going to make me laugh all the time. Mm -hmm. And before when I was dating, being like the steady Eddie, at least I'm showing up. I try to communicate. I didn't want to be that person. That seems too bland, too black you know, and white. Sometimes vanilla is a pretty good flavor because <laughs> if, you have, if you have a really good vanilla ice cream, you can put any kind of topping on it and it's going to be great. Okay. Yeah. I like adventure. I like Sunday to be adventure day. And we may plan to go for a hike this Sunday, Ron, but you know, you're going to call me tomorrow and say, Denise, I'd rather change plans now because it looks like there's going to be a really bad storm coming. I don't want to get caught in it. I don't want to have problems with it. I don't, um, you know, we, we think it's going to come. So why don't we plan something else just in case? Interesting. As an example, or I got this call and, you know, my mom really wants me to come over. I'd like you to come too. She needs help with X, Y, and Z. You know, she's 70 years old. Don't know how much longer she's going to be here. I'm fine with that. I'm fine with that because A, it's giving me enough time to reorganize plans if I choose not to go to your mother's. Or if I haven't met your mother or your mother doesn't like me, right. or, I might say, or I might say, you know, Ron, you're going to be crawling under the house because you, you got to do something under there to fix the foundation. So, you know, why don't you go have time with your mom and I'll go do something with my girlfriends, you know, mm -hmm. don't wait till Sunday morning and say, oh, shit, I got to go do this for my mom. Like I said before, I'm easy. I can work with anything. Just put up the flag and be honest with me. Just communicate. That's what I would do when I was out there dating. What I would do is, man, I know I got. I know I don't want to go out on a date that night. I don't want to hang out with us and be myself. Mm -hmm. I'll cancel last minute. Like, like, meaning that say it's ten a.m. and I'm supposed to see you six p.m. tonight. I'll cancel. I'm like, I, I can't make it. There's some excuse, and I wouldn't give an alternative. I'd be like, oh, I just can't make it. You know, I got to work late or whatever. I just want to go and relax. I see when we bother. And I should have been just up front. Hey, look, Denise, or whoever I'm dating, I'm really tired. I know we're still going to have dinner plans. I just don't want to go out. What do you think about coming over, hanging out, or can we do the following day? Yeah. I just didn't want to, I didn't want to disappoint. And I was totally afraid of being rejected. So it's easier yeah. to lie than it is to be straight up honest. Hey, look, I just don't want to hang out tonight. Because I was afraid of getting a click or... U F Y C K, you know, whatever may be on the phone, I just wouldn't do it. Well, but again, but we talked about this earlier on the conversation. There's fear of rejection. There's fear of, you know, putting yourself out there. Um, 
there are times when I'll have a date with a guy and blessedly he'll call and say, I'm really sorry, I got to cancel because I have to work late. I'm, you know, whatever, whatever. And I'm grateful. <laughs> Thank you. I'm feeling really tired too. It's okay. I mean, I'd rather, if I'm, if I, particularly if I'm not in a position in a state of the relationship where I'm living with someone, I would, it's not that I always want to be perfect and presentable. You know, things do come up. It's okay. And I get, you know, work is, so much faster and harder now because there's email and all this stuff and everything has to be done so much faster. I get that at the end of the day, sometimes you just need to come to silence. Mm -hmm. Okay. So I'm cool with that. And all these women out there that take a page out of my book. It's okay. It's not that he doesn't care about you. He needs to self soothe sometimes. So when he does show up and be present, he's more willing to be there. Just like you want to be more willing to be there for him. Mm. <clears throat> okay, so let me ask this question. A woman's perspective. Yep. What happens when a guy's doing too much of that? Ah, I got to work later. I can't do this. What do you say to yourself then? You know, everybody gets a couple passes, and particularly it depends on the type of job he has. And then, and then by the third or fourth time, <clears throat> depending on the frequency, then it'll then there's a come to Jesus of what's really going on. Come to Jesus. <laughs> I love come that. Jesus. Come to Jesus. What's really going on? And it's okay. Let's part ways before it gets really nasty or ugly or whatever. And, the, you know, there were a couple of guys that I was dating off these websites and some of them were like, you know, really full on and, oh my God, I want to marry you and all this other stuff. And I'm like, <laughs> I want to pick up my you. and run away whenever I can. And, um, uh, you know, a couple of them, you know, turned into just good casual hangout friends you know we realized there wasn't any chemistry as far as going out the one guy was still mourning his ex his late wife who had passed a couple of years ago i was the first person he dated i happened to have the same name as his late wife and i was like that's cool then you know what let's you want to hear her voice at the end of the line when you call denise and not mine so let's just go watch football on occasion get out of the house it's cool but I know I'm not the typical woman and I want to be the center. Most women want to be the center of attention and on the pedestal and all about them. And I want that sometimes a little bit. I broke so the mold when they made me and the world is probably pretty happy about that. I can tell you, <laughs> but. You know, what it really takes is that what I'm seeing hearing is that men do not communicate. I'm one of them. I used to be. You, you, you know, communicate. You're getting, you're getting a lot better. I'm getting tremendously better because we touched on this before. Men, easy way to say it, are results driven. Mm -hmm. Like having a fancy car, having a great education, having an amazing career. When from a childhood, women more or less are taught to how you're feeling, how do, what your emotions like. How do you feel this month or next month because of the cycle, what may be happening? Men don't understand that. We don't know, not just in relationships, but the world's problems can be solved with just communicating. Hey, it's not working out. Or, hey, I'm looking for something completely different. Hey, you know what? There's someone like type of like dating. We could be friends, but, but we're so afraid of disappointing. Or being looked like a jerk. Or being looked like a jerk. Okay, first of all, if you want the world's problems solved, put four or five women in a room with a bunch of alcohol, we'll get it solved. Okay. We'll tell you exactly <laughs> how to do it. So just follow our direction. Okay. So, so that's one thing. Um, uh, yeah. Part of it is, is fear of rejection, but you know what? My generation, probably my sisters ahead of me. You, okay. Part of the generation before me, we were the first kind of women to say, you can do whatever you want. You don't have to depend on a man. There are a lot of women in, in my age group who are the breadwinners while the husbands stay home. Mm -hmm. um, I, there, I think there's too much emphasis on what kind of job you have, what's your title, what's this, what's that. It's, it should be about the person. For me, a relationship should be about the personality. Now, do I happen to have a six or seven figure income? 
Yeah, that always helps. <laughs> <laughs> of course. <laughs> it always helps. Um, and sorry, I'm going to admit this publicly right now. My income is zero. So I have to find people um, that friends and dates and whatever with everything else in my arsenal that I have. And I do I want to be um, self-sufficient and be able to contribute my way? Absolutely. I don't want to be handed anything, but that's that has to be like the icing on the cake. That's the icing on the cake for me. If that makes sense. No, it makes totally sense. And I guess where I'm coming from too is that my last relationship was so full of lies and bullshit and theft and pain and abuse and just horrible crap that a I you should don't want that. a I should be dead. <laughs> B, I can see, I, I've always been able to see through it and I was pretty trapped. It took me a while to get out of here, but get out of it. But, um, you know, I'm not, I'm not doing that again, you know, and I don't think anyone should have to go through that male or female. You shouldn't have to put up with that for me. I shouldn't have to put up with that from you. And that is what really happened. You go through crappy relationship or you have a shocker in your life. And the value system, which always has been there, now becomes forefront. So now you realize, okay, yeah, I had all the pizzazz, I had all the flair, I had all this, but damn, that didn't bring me any happiness at all. Not long-term happiness, short-term for sure. Yeah. Then you I realize- the nice, yeah, yeah, I had the nice house, I had the Mercedes, I had it all. I had it all. You had it all. And now- I was, I was the loneliest married woman on the planet. See? I was just about to say that. Then you you start realizing, I'm not happy. And the reason why you're not happy is that the values and principles you live your life by are not being met. Yep. So when you left that unhappy place, now you realize, wait a minute here. I'm going to fight tooth and nail for my own happiness. I, I may have zero, but damn sure I'll be happy. I have zero now. That doesn't mean I'm going to have zero tomorrow you won't or the next day and it's going to take me it's taking me a little bit longer to get out of the slump but i'm getting there slowly but surely getting there. and yeah. you build your character and your values at the same time and that's yeah. what's crucial that's the, that's the whole crucial thing is i had to go through a breakdown myself and realize wait a minute ron what are you doing here yeah. my idea was that i blame craziness on the fact god and blessed me with a gift of having a good relationship that's mm -hmm. total bullshit Reality is God blessed me with everything I needed to. I said, I picked the wrong tool. I need to pick up a shovel, but I was picking up a saw. Yep. You know, I can dig a hole, but here I have a saw trying to dig a hole. It's not gonna work. Exactly. And 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 you're right. I mean, there's a lot of teaching from our parents about don't show your emotions, don't don't air your dirty laundry, don't do this and that and the other thing. But what we were never taught was character first. No. There are some people out there who give lip service to it. There are very few people who actually live by that and lead by example. And if very. more, and if more people did that, and if more, it, it's one thing where everyone's into be kind right now. Mm -hmm. Right now, it's a whole shift about be kind. And yes, we need to be kind. We also need to be genuine. And you can't just say, hey, have a great day, just because it's the kind thing to do. It has to be the right thing to do. For you, yeah. Because you. you know what? <clears throat> We're caught up with this whole uh, gratitude and, and all this stuff. And I think this is a great way at this time right now to create space to allow more gratitude in life. Mm -hmm. But your life's not happy, hunky dory, 24 7, seven, seven days a week. Just because someone outside, looks oh everything's going well does not mean you have no idea what their thoughts or what they're thinking mm -hmm. so being genuine when, when you're not feeling well or you don't feel like being kind is the gene is, is being genuine and being in line with whatever your principles are and you got to find what your principles are because then that's how you see your life and that will stop you from you know what is it uh she's so crazy or you know steady eddie is way to go right steady eddie yep so this is what i would say for those that are listening to um our podcast about he says she said if you want to have a truly wonderful relationship with a significant other the first thing you should really want to do is take a piece of paper 
write down your top five values. Mm -hmm. Okay, and rank them. Then at the same time, write one simple sentence of what it means to you. What does it look like? Uh, say flexible time. You want know, this one has flexible time. That's mm -hmm. one of my values because I want to have good go on vacation or take small day trips. Those are important to me. Because yes. then if you recognize your values, then when you get in a situation where uh, your significant other or person you're dating is making you angry, you go back to your values. Then one of those values are not working well. And that's how you were able to communicate versus, you know what, I'm mad at you today. You have mm -hmm. no idea why. Go back to your value system. What values that mean met, communicate that because then it will be more of a communication, more of an anger. So that's my two cents on she's so crazy and how <laughs> to live, how, how to have, live a better life. And, and I want to say one thing before I get done is for those that listen to this, when I pass relationships, I want to apologize from the bottom of my heart. I didn't know who I was at the time, didn't know what the hell I was doing. I was just trying to navigate life the best I could. And at this point right now, I know I've hurt a lot of people out there and I've been hurt too. I hope you guys forgive me. And for those that hurt me, I forgive you as well too, because I hope you guys find happiness and, and I myself have found better happiness with my, with my life and hope you do too. Okay, now it's my turn. <laughs> You just you just had a come to Jesus moment, Ron. Did you? Have I did. I did. I did. It was it was wonderful, and I, I'm I'm happy, I'm happy with that now. Okay, I oh my light just went out. I don't know why that happened. Um, I will also apologize. I guess my power went out. Holy crap! My power went <laughs> out now too. Um, I will I will also apologize to those in my life who I rejected, hurt, you know, I wasn't, I wasn't there for them and I wasn't the right person for them. And that is a hundred percent on me. Um, I wish you all well. And hopefully if I ever run into you in the future, at least we can just say hi and how you doing. And if we share more than that, we share more than that. And if we don't, it's okay too. Um, so that's my come to Jesus moment. But there's one of you that I still want to, you know, burn the bridge and torture a little bit. But I'll get over <laughs> that one too. Today's not the day, okay? In time. Today's not the day. So, um, yeah. So, you know, just remember, it's not always she's the one who's crazy. Because remember, how many fingers are pointing back at you? Three fingers pointing back at me. Yes, which is why in Taekwondo, when you point somewhere, it's always your hand out like this. So all the fingers are pointing out and you never point at the person. You point towards in the direction that you want to go because you want to be leading yourself to the, the next goal. Right, exactly. So that's how, Energy that's shift. How, that's how to change that perspective. I love it. Yeah. So I want to say thanks again for our audience for listening to another He Said, She Said. And we're going to be doing one a week. And uh, if you want to hear a topic, don't forget to comment when I post on social media, Instagram, Facebook, or YouTube, because then I'll be able to see what I'm missing, share the comment, and maybe you could be a guest as well, too. So again, this is Ronald Johnson, and I help people that are tired of who they are and where they are in life. And you can find me under www.ronjohnsoncoaching.com. And I'm Denise Lewis. Thanks for hanging out today on our third podcast. Ron, it's always a pleasure. I'm glad we got to have a few giggles and technical glitches <laughs> along the way. <laughs> what you don't understand is his power went out before we, when we first started. We yep. had to start over again. Now my power is gone. No. <laughs> and I'm in California, damn it. <laughs> We're the land of sunshine and PG&E. So, right. <laughs> and, I, and if any of this resonates with you, I can be found at www.grandslamcoaching.com. That's grandslamcoaching.com. Please send us some tips, any topics you want to hear about. Please give us some feedback. We'd be happy to hear it and make it better for you, our listeners. So I want everyone to have a Grand Slam day. Come on, Ron. Woo, Grand Slam day to you. Boom, out right here. back at me. Yeah, out of the park. Out of the park. <laughs> Hope they catch you over SF Park right into the water, right? Absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely. That's when the little whistles come up and the water goes and yeah. uh, what do they call it? I can't remember. I'm totally blanking on what they call it. 
anyway, it doesn't matter because it's a fancy one. So, yep. yeah. All right, guys. Thank you. Talk to you Have soon. Have a great day, everybody. See you soon.